I know you guys love that kind of stuff right there. Just happened to be getting up to the speed limit. Anyways, uh, figured we'd do a little bit of some talking today. Nothing serious or anything like that, but you guys have been asking for uh, more vlogs in my car. And you know, because I was washing this car, cleaning it, waxing it, polishing it, sealing it, yeah, every damn thing in the world that I haven't had it out on the road. This is about the only the second time I've had it out. Yesterday I took it out there and uh, took some pictures by the lake with it. But um, that was about all I did. So, and then I drove right back home and I parked it in the garage. So today I figured, now that I don't have to wash and clean or thing, anything today, let me go ahead and take it out for a little bit of a fun drive today. And uh, that's my game plan. So I just, oh jeez. We've got some uh, big car news that have you seen in the, the TVs lately. I don't know if you guys have been paying any attention to that, but uh, Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear <laughs> punched one of his producers or something like that, and now he's suspended? And it's like, what the fuck? Whoa, what is that girl doing on the side of the road like that? But um, anyways, so he punched uh, his producer, now they're suspending him? You know, you know, all I see that's going to happen out of this today is that he'll have to pay a fine to the BBC or whatever, and they'll put him back on. They cannot afford to lose Top Gear over his annex because somebody else, whether it's an American company, this company or that company, will buy him. Maybe they can't own the Top Gear title to the name Top Gear, but they'll call it something else, and damn well, they'll take him. And they'll take the other two guys and pay them even more. Because you know they're getting paid absolute millions per year. So, um, wow, I could have made that if people weren't fucking doing 30. But this is one of those red light cameras here. And, um, like I said, they cannot afford to lose him. So they're going to play the game, I really feel like. And they're just going to fine him, hit him with a fine. Um, you know, suspend him. I heard it suspended for the rest of the season. But they, like I said, they cannot afford to let him go over this matter so they'll just hit him with a really hard fine and call it a day because like i said the minute they go out there and they let him go whether it's american company or a different british company out there is going to come up and swoop up and say look man i'll pay you 20 million dollars a year and you can fucking basically run the show and that's basically how i see it going down how they'll let they'll accept it and be like if you don't like your producer We'll find you a new one, just like Obamacare says. <laughs> if you like your doctor, you can keep it. Absolute bullshit, guys. If you know anything about Obamacare, that is absolute bullshit. Remember, my wife is a doctor. So many people lost their doctors. That's another whole thing, but I'll try and stay away from politics, okay, guys? But, um, yeah, that's what I think is going to happen, is that he'll, even if, if, so if he leaves and they create a new car show channel or whatever, um... He'll make crap with money. All right, guys, we should think of a topic real quick. I know we've been uh, kind of this, that, and the other, talking about current events, news, uh, gas prices, whatever. But we need to get on a topic here and kind of, you know, focus here. It's like writing a research paper. You're going to be all over the place when you're in college writing a paper. You've got to really uh, focus on something and just lock onto it and go, you know. So that's the plan. That's what they'll teach you in college. College is really boring. And uh, it's kind of blue, but you know, for a lot of people, you, you have to have it to have a better job out there that's gonna get paid a lot more. Um, I fortunately wasn't like that. I already had a job when I was in high school for UPS, and UPS does, pays very good, very good. So um, even with my degree going to college history, let's say I wanted to uh, become a, a teacher at a high school or something like that, it starts at like 33,000 a year. The UPS drivers average 80000 a year. Even if I had been a principal like my dad had done, <laughs> they make like 70, 65, 70 grand a year. Yeah, see what I'm saying here? And you didn't need a college education, but that's a whole other topic. Today's topic is if you had one car to pick from the 1990s, what would it be? In a money does not matter in this topic guys money does not matter so you guys have 50 million dollars to spend today which means you can buy anything from the 90s without even batting an eye what car would you buy that's the topic of today's discussion and um 
That is what we will discuss right now. Let me get over. So if you were thinking about cars, because 90s to me was the last great generation since the 60s with some amazing cars, that's why I'm bringing up the 90s for you guys now. What would you guys pick as the car you would buy? I think this is a really good topic and I think you guys will really like it. Um, you know, the 2000s, here's how it goes. The so 2000s for me is really when all your Japanese car companies and everybody just started neutering the sports cars. Everybody was trying to haul ass to make a giant fucking SUV, the biggest one they can, get out of making sports cars because they said they weren't selling very many. But we're selling fucking SUVs like crazy, which I understand that. But at the same time, they lost their passion for cars and they, uh, the looks of their, even their sedans just really took a nosedive. I'll give you an example here. Um, all right, that guy, see there, he wouldn't even turn right on red. You could turn right on red in America. And um, where the Honda Accord was a decent looking car back in the 90s, it wasn't a hot, hot hatch sports car or like a real thing, but it was decent looking. Well, um, we're coming up on the loop here, guys. Just letting you know where we're at. The loop starts, goes that way a little bit now. They extended it, it goes that way, but the bulk of it goes this way. This is Osceola Parkway here, guys. And um, this will take you straight into Disney World. If I stay on Osceola Parkway here for another, I think it's eight or nine miles, you, I, we will be in Disney World. So I might take you down here. See, you can see the loop now. So back on topic here. Um, uh, what was I gonna say here? With, they had better looking cars. You had better looking uh, smaller cars, this, that, and the other. Like you had your little uh, hatchback wagon, this, that, and the other. The cars just generally look better. But once we got into the 2000, I feel like quality, especially the Japanese cars now that they were making them in America, and I've covered this a little bit before on my polish making, that the quality really just started sliding. It went down. And to me, that's when uh, those car companies went, eh, like I loved Hondas. I didn't think I'd ever buy anything but a Honda car. And uh, once we had the 2000s, it was like every car was a dull, boring box. Like the cords were boring. Uh, they had no sporty cars left at all. Um, you had no S2000, they dropped the S2000. Uh, of course you had no, what else? You had no NSX, you had no uh, Integras, you had no Preludes. The only thing you left you had was a Civic Si, which is a decent little sporty car looking car, but it's no true sports car. And that's my topic, why the 2000s, was today's topic here of what you guys enjoyed. So here we go, we're starting to be in a loop. It goes all the way down that way with all kinds of businesses and then it wraps around this way. So you're gonna have outdoor places, you have Best Buy over here, you have a crap load of other things over here, but mainly the loop is here. So you have Kohl's, you'll have JCPenney, Ross, Bed Bath & Beyond, jewelry shops, the, the there's a theater in there. Like. Like I said, this place is massive. It goes all the way down here, and then they just build another extension on going that way. If we took it right at the light, you would have seen it all. So this is where the big shopping area is for Kissimmee. So if you come down here at Kissimmee, or you're actually going to visit Disney World, you're about 10 minutes away from this place because we're actually, right now, we're heading generally towards Disney World. And uh, I don't know if I can sit behind this. This is ridiculous. But um, that's why I wanted to make the topic about the 90s cars. What would be your thing? There you go, Disney World, eight miles away. What would be your car of the 90s? If I had to ask you right now, would you pick something uh, uh, exotic, like a Porsche, Lamborghini? Would you pick something domestic, American sports cars? Uh, and it could be any car. I don't, it could be a truck for all I care. I don't really care. The topic is what car would you have? And it, or a vehicle, we'll just say vehicle, because car or truck. And I can't do this anymore. I've got to get around these people. These people have no idea where they're going and you can clearly see it. See, I have no idea where I'm going. I'm just gonna put along through here when the speed limit's much faster. You know what, fuck it. You guys are going to Disney World today. It's only eight miles away. I'm gonna take you to Disney. That's the plan. <laughs> so we gotta go through, the, we gotta take a toll road there, but I figured, you know, spending a, a, a dollar or two on tolls with my son passes. So back on topic here, what would be your 90s car? You know, when I think about the cars from the 90s, I'm thinking Acura NSX. I'm thinking Integra Type R's. I'm thinking, you know, your little CRX hatchbacks. Those were great little just cars for the young man to get into. 
I'm thinking uh, Lamborghinis. Uh, Porsches, I've never really been that fond of. It's kind of been like an eh to me. I don't really carry their way. Um, what else do I think about when I see that? Some RX-7s, the Supras. Uh, geez, the cars, the lines go on, and you're like, geez, of course you got the GTRs, which we never had in America. You know, we didn't get them in America until 2009. And I know a lot of my European crowd is going to be like, oh, well, of course, they've had them. But in America, of course, you know we didn't have them. Uh, Evos, we didn't have them, I think, until uh, or 2003, I think. It's right around there is when we got the Evos. But Evos, I know, have been out in the rest of the world for a while now. Uh, so that that's another one for you. What would you guys pick right now? Uh, let me step back here. Let me go ahead and say something. Let's go ahead and do this. You have two choices. You can go one exotic and one within reason car, less than $100,000. Okay? So you can go one exotic and spend a million dollars and then or whatever you want to spend. And one has to stay under 100000 So that could be any typical regular car that normal people could buy. And uh, let's go from there. Um, Let's say if I had to pick, I'm torn between a Supra twin turbo and an NSX, but my heart belongs to the NSX. So that's my choice right there, an Acura NSX for the 90s. Uh, I know it's uh, it only has like 208 horsepower, but the car, if you had a 90s NSX on the road right next to you today, they're going to be like this. Damn. Oh, my God. That's exactly the reaction that you still get today. All right. If... You know, if it's going to go to a supercar, <sighs> mm, God, there's even Ferraris that I like out there. You know what? A supercar is still going to be a real toss-up for me because uh, I really, you know, for me, I can't really just narrow down one because there is a few ones. But, um, you know, just to have something a little bit exotic. I would go ahead and say the McLaren just because uh, of what it could do, what the capabilities of it could do in the 90s compared to even most cars today. Compared to most cars today, it rings, rings wrap, bleh, it runs rings around them. So uh, yeah, that will be my two cars. So tell me guys, what is your two cars and um, what would you pick if you had a choice today? All right, guys, this is kind of the thing where you're going to be wanting to be interested in the video now, obviously. Before, it was like, eh, but now, okay. Right here is Interstate 4, I-4, that you guys all know about. It runs through Orlando. If you're driving down here with your family and you're going to be coming down here for vacation, this is the road you're going to be on to get to Disney World, right here. And this is the exit you will take to get to Disney World is right here. This is Osceola Parkway. Remember that. We are passing over Interstate 4 right now. Sometimes you come on here I-4 is a parking lot all the way back. I-4 is hell, hell most of the time. One dingbat who doesn't know how to drive from up north goes, Psh! the shuts down all of I-4. You will sit there for an hour while they just let one or two cars through at a time. Here's what you guys all came for, Disney World. You can see it's about 20, 25 minutes from my house. It's on the opposite side of Kissimmee. Kissimmee uh, is on the I-4. We're on the far side by the turnpike. Uh, we're heading towards St. Cloud. That's where I live. We're on the St. Cloud line. I'm not going to floor through here because let you guys get a good look of everything. And I've actually seen the cops sit through here. It's only 45 through here. And the cops will sit up here in the corner and wait for people to go flying by. It's actually pretty crazy. And um, so here you go, guys. Welcome to Disney World. I know this is where you guys, a lot of you guys have never even been here before. And a lot of guys see the TV shows, you know. I, I grew up coming to Disney every single year. And you can see they have their own signage. It doesn't look anything like anything else. We're on Disney property now, guys. This is just like a full-on interstate road, okay. If I, if I take a left here, it's ESPN uh, Wide World of Sports. Sure enough, there's a state trooper right to the left there. He's in a, S in a black uh, Suburban. Right by ESPN Wide World Sports. See that black SUV there? And there's there's a charger right next to him. You see him? <laughs> I told you they're out here, guys. I was not going to lie to you. And um, so ESPN Wide World of Sports. What that is, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to show you some of the areas. I'm, I would take you towards um, downtown Disney. I still might. But uh, that might be for a whole different trip. 
because down this way is downtown Disney and stuff. But the ESPN Wide World of Sports is where the Atlanta Braves do their spring training. So if you're a Braves fan, right there is where you go. So Kissimmee actually holds two teams, the Houston Astros, which is right, right by my house, which I heard is actually going to be moving to West Palm Beach here in the next two years. They're uh, starting to merge all the spring training centers down into, uh, you know, every, you have two teams per uh, camp. So I guess we're losing one of them. And uh, uh, Braves are still going to stay here. But, um, yeah. So there's the new parking garage, the gray building in front of you. They just finished that. I think it's monstrous. Here's Typhoon Lagoon if you guys want to go to the water park. Typhoon Lagoon is right here. I missed that light. I should have gone a lot faster, but I'm trying to show off the area a little bit more. But uh, here's downtown Disney. Like you said, you got the Cirque du Soleil crap. I'm not into that if you guys are. Apologize. I'm not into that kind of stuff. It kind of looks gay to me. Um, you got Disney Quest there. You have uh, House of Blues is right across the street from Disney Quest where they have the big shows and uh, concerts and stuff are in there. Uh, you have a big theater here. AMC Theater is here. Um, you're going to have uh, T-Rex, which is one badass place to eat at. It's really cool. They have Rainforest Cafe there. Uh, what is it called? Uh, trying to think. It's it's like a, a riverboat from back in the day, and it's a, a crab thing, some crab trap or something like that. It's really cool. You got basically all these like street things that will be out there, performers out there all day long. You have, um, gosh, they have like a performance area on the far side. They're really redoing the hell out of it. They're making it way bigger. That's why they had to build a parking garage because they're expanding it and adding more places this way and that way where the parking lot used to be. Um, you have G Godiva, not Godiva. Yeah, it's Godiva chocolate or something. Ghirardelli. It's Ghirardelli chocolate down here on the far side. Uh, Lego stores down here on the far side. Let's try and fucking catch a green light on the far side. I don't know. A lot of times there's cops out here, so I'm not going to really floor it through here. I don't know what the heck this is. It looks like they're building an all over ramp. Going somewhere. I wonder if it's going to I-4 because uh, I'm, I'm looking that way right now and it's a straight shot cleared all the way out through because I-4 is only right over there. So I'm thinking that it's probably I-4 that it's going to cut through. This is where you want to come if you want to get a job at Disney is over here. Uh, you would take yourself over here and do your inner applications, this, that, and the other. Um, you can see it's just straight construction. But on this side, yeah, you're going to have Planet Hollywood here to my left. You probably, I know you can't see it in the camera, but I can see the big, you know, earth-looking ball. That's there. Um, and then just past here is going to be all your massive hotels and stuff. But you, you can see how bad the traffic is here. It's only 3 o'clock here in the afternoon. If you come here in the evening on a weekend, it has taken me 45 minutes to get down to the parking spot before. 45 minutes. From all the way back there, it is a crawl. Nobody goes anywhere. It's like a giant wreck happened, and everybody's going, Go! It's fucking green, and nobody wants to go. This is why we get caught so many green lights, I mean red lights, because nobody goes here by doing the, <gasps> Look at that! Oh my God, look at that! And nobody drives. All right, we got to get around. So we're getting around. All right, but there you go, guys. That is part of Disney, Double Trees here. Like I said, you've got Lake Buena Vista Resort there. It's a nice big pothole there. And you go here, I-4 again. So there you go, guys. I really hope you like this vlog. A lot of you guys asked me to take you this place, that place. There's a Hyatt Regencies right there. That place is badass. And um, yeah, so here you go. Like I said, we're back on the main drag again. This is um, State Road 535 here. And uh, from here, you're going to see a lot of the high-end places. And, uh, yep, there you go. So, guys, I hope you liked the video. Uh, I, I try to take you to some new places you've never seen before. A lot of probably guys probably have been to Disney World, but maybe not in a long time since you were a little kid. And uh, I hope you guys liked it a little bit, taking you down here. Uh, what is your favorite car? Uh, all that fun stuff. Let me know. Tell me if you guys like this kind of thing. I mean, you know, I will take you a lot more in to Disney in the future here. So uh, just hang in there, and uh, that way I can show you a lot more. If you guys want, I can uh, bring cameras with me. Sometime my, me and my wife go on the thing, take you inside the park. Uh, a lot of times I'll go on those rides and do the rides deal, and I can bring the camera on the ride. We can just go out in there and have fun like that. So 
let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all the comments. I really liked it when I got to put up that last uh, car vlog video. That you so many responses. It really means a lot to me. And uh, let me know what kind of things you want to hear. I'm trying to listen to you guys. You guys wanted to see the new places. Some people said they would love to go see Disney World. So there you go. I got to show you some new areas that I never usually take anybody on on a driver's vlog. And uh, you got to see it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you guys at the very next video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you all later.